Alright. chapter to go in this course. We're going to split it up into two tests. So the first uh -huh. test is going to be on 8.1, 8.2. Notice we're spending two days on that. And then 8.4. And then the test is, I guess it's not next week, it's on the 29th. And then 8.3 all by itself is one test. Where did it go? Where did everything go? One, two, three, four. Where did it go? Wait, where? Who says that? And then we have two. So we've got three more tests now. So we're going to have one test on 8.1, 8.2, 8.4. Another test on 8.3 by itself. And then to end the quarter, we we'll have another test graphing calculator on oh. everything we learned in chapter 8. Oh, graphing yeah. calculator. Why? You don't have to do any integrals. <laughs> Just punch it in on your calculator. Every single problem will be an integral. Okay, so now that we know how to integrate, now we can actually solve problems. So the title of chapter chapter eight is Applications of Integrals. Yes. Applications of Okay, so this is the kind of, now we already, I already talked about this how many times already this quarter, but in physics, if this is time versus velocity, if this is the velocity graph, like something like this, in fact, here, let's, let's do an actual problem. Oh, you're racing it or horrible? Thank you. So this is the velocity, Let, let's say it looks oh, you like this. Let's say that this is 3, 4, and 2, area of each one. Now, if you're given the graph of the velocity, what does this area represent? Position change. The distance traveled. Distance traveled. The distance traveled. So, if we, why don't we just call this A, B, and C, then you're going to get a problem like this tonight. So, from 0 to A, the particle traveled 3 units to the right. Now, how do you know it's to the right? Because the velocity is positive. Remember, if the velocity is positive, the particle is traveling to the right. If the velocity is negative, it's traveling to the left. So what does this area represent? What does that mean? From A to B, the particle traveled four units to the left. And then finally, what does this area represent over there? From time equal B to C, the particle traveled two units to the right. So there's two questions we've got to answer here. What was the displacement of the particle? Now these are terms you know from physics, right? Displacement mean, means from 0 to C, how far is the particle from its original position? And if the di displacement is positive, it means it's to the right of where you started. And if it's negative, it's to the left of where you started. So how do you figure out the displacement? Well. From here to here, the particle went three units to the right, if you need to draw a picture. Then from here to here, it went four units to the left, so it went four that way. And then from here to here, it went two units to the right. So where is the particle in relationship to its initial position? One. Yeah, it's one unit to the right, so the displacement is one. Uh, is there a way you can get this? Yeah, so remember, if the if the graph is below the x-axis, it counts negative. So if you count that as a negative, then what is 3 plus negative 4 plus 2? 1. Yeah. So to, to find the displacement of a particle, all you have to do is integrate the velocity from t1 to t2, and that will give you the displacement of the particle. You simply integrate the velocity. Because the integral gives you the area, right? Okay, now what, what if I were to ask you, now what is the total distance traveled by the particle?
Well, if the particle traveled three to the right, then it went four to the left, and then two to the right, what was the total distance that it traveled? Nine units, right? So by doing an integral, how can I get that answer? Because if you just do an integral, remember, when the graph is below the x-axis, it, co it counts negative, right? So how can we get the total distance traveled? In other words, how can we compensate for this negative one here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So here, like here. What do I have to put here to get the total distance traveled? What can I do to get the absolute value? Thank you. You take the absolute value of the velocity. Right? Because if you were to graph the absolute value of the velocity, wouldn't everything below get reflected above? Yes. And then you just add out those areas which are all positive, and then you get the total distance traveled. So this is a big difference now. So you, you, when you take the AP exam, you've got to read now. So if they're going to ask you for the displacement of the particle, then you do this integral. You just integrate the velocity. If they ask you for the total distance traveled, then you've got to do this integral, the integral of the absolute value of the velocity. That's two different things now. OK, now tonight's homework, the first part of the homework, they're going to give you a velocity function ahead. In fact, why don't, why don't we do an exact example? Uh, uh, t squared minus <coughs> 40 plus 3 times 3 to make it easier. Okay, from t equals 0 to t equals 2, find A, the displacement of the particle, and then B, the total distance traveled. Okay, now, sometimes you can use a calculator. Notice that some of the problems tonight you're going to use a calculator, so you can just punch in either one. But if you don't have a calculator, you got to do some work. Please do. I figured it out. Okay, so if you're smart, you can answer both of these questions by just doing one, the same problem. Okay, so I'm going to I'm going to teach you how. Okay, to find the displacement of the particle. See, now some of you are not even writing an integral like on your test or whatever. When you take the AP exam, they're going to ask you a question. You have to write the integral, that's one point, and then you've got to compute the integral, that's another point. Because some of you don't even write the integral. It's like, and you don't, some of you are still not even writing the DTs. I laugh at you already. Okay, how do you find the displacement? You know what? I'm going to change this to t equals 5 because it's a better problem. Why did I even write 2? That's stupid. Anyway, from t equals 0 to 5, find the displacement. What integral represents the displacement of the particle? The integral from 0 to 5 of the velocity dt. Now, can I just write v of t? Yeah, because it's defined. If it's defined in the problem, then you can just write that. See, right there, boom, that's one point. Now you've got to compute this. Uh, now, how do we compute this? Let's do it right here. Well, what is d of t? 3t squared minus 12t plus 9 dt. And again, that dt means something now. This not only tells you, you know, not only tells you what your independent variable is, which is t, it represents the infinitesimal width. Because remember, and again, I keep telling you guys this, when you compute an area, what you are doing is you're adding up an infinite number of rectangles, the area of them. How do you find the height of this rectangle? That's this. It's V of T. Whether you use the left end point, the right end point, the midpoint, or any point in between. The Y coordinate tells you the height. And in this case, the Y coordinate is the velocity. And then what is the width of this rectangle? which is a change in time, infinitesimally small. That's what this is, dt. So length times width gives you the area of a rectangle, and the integral tells you to add up all of these rectangles from where, wherever to wherever. That's what an integral is. It's an infinite sum. You're adding up an infinite number of things. So in tonight's homework, you're just adding up an infinite number of rectangles. But then we can uh, apply it to other things. We can add up an infinite a number of other things. So we're going to add up all of these rectangles from 0 to 5, like this. Let's add up all of these.
all these infinitesimally thin rectangles, and then you get the whole area. So that's why those of you who are not writing the DT, I laugh at you I've been, I've been telling you guys the whole time to write it, and now you don't write it, then your AP exam score is yours. Don't, 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 take, don't blame me for your score. Not okay, now, how do you compute this integral without a calculator? What do we do? Antiderivative. Okay, antiderivative. I made it easy. Six. T, three. <laughs> I made it easy. <laughs> T. What? Oh, three. Three. Yeah, yeah. To the third. Minus something T squared. You got 12 T squared. No. Two. What? No. Six. 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 Six T. Plus 19. Uh, plus 19. <laughs> plus C. How come you're not writing the plus C again? Because they're going to cancel out in a definite integral. Okay, plug in the top number 125 minus 25 times 6. If you had 6 quarters, how much you got? 150. Plus 45 minus 0 minus 0 plus 0. So your answer is? 0. No. 20. So the displacement is 20. That means after 5 seconds, well, if T is measured in seconds, the particle is 20 units to the right of where it started. See, because in physics, the kind of problems you guys did, I keep telling you guys this, you guys only did the kind of like this. Did. You got to do stuff where you can actually compute the area, right, in physics. But then in real life, you think it's going to be like that? Eh, probably not. <laughs> so we have we need a way to figure it out. Will it even be like this? And then I hope I hope you guys didn't forget because tonight's homework you're gonna you're gonna yeah. estimate this integral using LRAM, RRAM, MRAM, oh. and the trapezoidal rule. Mr. Parker. Wait, what? Why? <laughs> because we learned that already. Yeah, I know. So I don't have to redo it then. Right? Oh okay, God. so that's a the displacement. Now we gotta figure out the total distance traveled by the particle. Lord have mercy. Okay, now right, what integral so represents the total? Yes. In the fourth, in the fourth quarter, are we still gonna be using the book? No. We are. You guys don't even bring a book. <laughs> Most of you. So don't. It's not like I'm so by the end of the third quarter, you should sell your book to the eleventh graders already. For more yeah. burning. Why burn something yeah, you don't even have? <laughs> It's not good for studying for the AP exam. What? It's not good He's for studying give us for the AP exam. You can if you want, but I'm going to prepare you. So if you just That's do the work, available. you will be prepared. I tell Wait, you, so that you over. 90% of my students get five. So <laughs> Are you going to be part of the 10%? Um, well, we only have 15 way. people in this class, so we, we only can afford to get one person oh. <laughs> to not get a five. And then otherwise, we're below the average already. Who's it gonna be? Who do you think? I don't know. I hope nobody. Yes. Okay. Anyway, what integral will represent the total distance traveled by the particle from zero to five? The integral of the absolute value of the velocity. So if the velocity is defined in the problem, which it is, you write that down. Boom! You get one point. I thought we had two and one. What? Both the I think yeah, yeah, I'm going to show you at the end. Oh, okay. Okay, now, how do you compute that? What do you do without the value? A, pretend it's not there. Just take it away. <laughs> if you take away the absolute value, you're just going to end up with the same answer over here. So what do you, what do we normally do when we see absolute value? You make a piecewise function, that's right. Oh. So what you have to do is you have to figure out when the velocity is positive and when it's negative, because you have to make separate integrals for those. Right? Zero zero. You have to account for when it's below the x-axis and when it's above. So here's the velocity. What you need to do is you need to factor it. So that, see, I made it so that it factors very nicely. And then you got to make a number line, Woo which is labeled. I keep telling you guys to label it. Okay, what goes on the number line? One and three. How do I know it's plus minus plus? Because it's Because oh. <laughs> it's a parabola opening upward. If I were to graph it, it looks like this. See, above, below, above. Or if you need to plug in numbers, whatever. You gotta make the number line. So now, this tells you what separate integrals to make. So, my first integral is to go from zero to one. See, right here. Then I gotta do another integral from one to three. 
Then I need to do another integral from 3 to 5. So I'm going to do three separate integrals. Now, if you're smart, you're not going to reinvent the wheel, right? Although some of you like to reinvent the wheel. Look, we already took the, we already got the antiderivative right here. We got the antiderivative right here. So why, why? Because right, if you take the antiderivative of this, right, you can get this. So we'll run this. t cubed minus six t squared plus nine t from zero to one. Okay, let's do that. Go. Plug in the top number. 1 minus 6 plus 9 minus 0 minus 0 plus 0. Can I just write plus 0 minus 0? So what is that? Yeah. No, what is that? 4. 4. You have to come up with a number, you know. So what does, what does that number mean? From 0 to 1, the particle traveled 4 units to the right. Oh, right? Because look, the velocity is positive between 0 and 1. Now I'm going to integrate from 1 to 3. Now again, why reinvent the wheel? Here's the antiderivative. So you go t cubed minus 6t squared plus 9t, except now we're going from 1 to 3. Now when I do this, is the answer going to come out positive or negative? negative. It's going to come out negative because over here, the graph is below the x-axis. Mm -hmm. So the answer is going to come out negative. So if it doesn't come out negative, you did something wrong. OK, plug in the top number. 27 minus 54 plus 27 minus, and again, why reinvent, re, reinvent the wheel? Because look over here, you plugged in one, you got these numbers, so if I plug in one, shouldn't I get these numbers here? Some of you like to just put four, and then, hey, this is zero, right? 54 minus 54. Yes. And then we already computed this. This is 4, so it's 0 minus 4. Negative, negative 4. See, it came out negative. So what is, what is the meaning of this, though? This means from 1 to 3, the particle traveled 4 units to the left. You got it? OK, and then finally, what about from 3 to 5? Well, since the velocity is positive, you know the answer is going to come out positive. So here's the antiderivative again. And now we got to go from 3 to 5. Okay, here we go. Plug in the top number. 125 minus 6 quarters. We already did this already, Mr. Park. And then what happens when you plugged in 3? We got 0, right? Here, I'll just write it. 27 minus 24 plus 1 plus 1 zero. Since you guys like me, you can do it. This is 0. So what do we got? 20. 20. So what does that mean? From 3 to 5, the particle traveled 20 units to the right. OK, so here are the three answers right here. The particle traveled 4 units to the left, I mean right, then 4 to the left, then 20 to the right. What was the total distance traveled? 28. Total distance traveled 28 units. Oh, so Mr. Park, you were saying you can answer both questions by doing which one, A or B? Yeah, yeah you do B, because A only is going to tell you A, but B tells you both. What do you mean, Mr. Park? Because if I want to answer A, all you have to do is go this plus this plus this, right? What's so funny? <laughs> do you want to be able to picture? Your ex no. Wait, can you Wait, can you smile? I've never seen you smile in my life. I'm a grouchy old man. Wait, wait, wait. Do you have this picture? Cheese. Who was the one who was the side? I didn't get the smile because it was blonde. Lucille. Okay. Wait, smile. Smile. No. So if you want to answer A, you just go this plus this plus this. Just add up those numbers. No, I don't want to be in the picture. So what? I'm not in the picture. Why not? And then, if you want to answer part B, what do you do? You add up the absolute value of these numbers, right? You guys get it? <laughs> now, why does it work, Mr. Park? Why is it when you add this plus this plus this, you get the answer for A? Who knows? Because, so, come on, somebody come up with something good. Because, duh. Because, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, it, it, it is actually duh, but somebody tell me. Yeah, the property of integrals. Really what did we learn when well, we learned the properties of integrals? The integral, I don't want to write this out, but the integral from 0 to 1 
plus the integral from 1 to 3 plus the integral from 3 to 5 is equal to the integral from 0 to 5. No, 0 to 5. 0 to 5. So tonight's homework, when you don't have a calculator, this is what you got to do. You know you're going to have a lot of work because you got to figure out when the velocity. Now, of course, if you have a calculator, you just punch this in with the absolute values and your calculator does all the work. No. I'm hoping because everybody, everybody no. knows where the absolute values are, right? No. Shift catalog. We'll, we'll get there. Shift well, you guys just going to have to find it. Okay. Or go 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 it's not easy. I'll show you. What? Okay, we're not done yet, people. No, I we're got almost it. Not one of the options. So, Mr. Park, Mr. Park, mm -hmm. when you hit, see the velocity is a rate, right? Because, like, just think about it. A velocity is a rate. What are what are the units of velocity if we use meters and seconds? Meters per second. <laughs> and then this is a time unit, infinitesimally small. But it's still a time unit. Oh, so that's seconds. <laughs> So what happens when you multiply meters per second times seconds? No, no. You get meters over you meters get per second times oh, seconds. Yeah, yeah. meters. The no, seconds cancel out, and you get meters, which is a distance, right? So can we use, can we use integrals to do other things too? Yes. Oh, it sounds like a PC. No, this is not. Okay, let's say, okay, Liam, we're almost done. Okay. We could have been finished already if you guys just don't fool around. Do you what do you fool around today? What are you doing? Are you an exo Okay, let's say, let's say you have a pipe at home and you turn it on. Pipe it up. You turn on the pipe at home, water is flowing out of the pipe at three gallons per minute. How much water flowed out of the pipe for five minutes then? So for five minutes, how much water came out of the pipe? Five times three, great times time, right? But in real life, when you turn on a pipe, does it come out steady, three gallons per minute? No. No, it doesn't, because it depends on whoever else is using water in your neighborhood, right? Sure. Or, or, or the steadiness of your pipe. So in real life, you cannot just multiply that. So what happens if, if you have a rate that's not constant? Then you gotta do an integral. We gotta use a calculus. So here we go. You turn on the pipe, boom. That's not even a calculus book. There is a oh. <laughs> you, turn, you turn on the pipe, and let's say water, I'm trying to give you guys a problem. Water is flowing out of the pipe at t squared no, t times t cubed plus one. What? How do you get that though? Yeah, I'm, like, I'm just making it up. <laughs> How do you get that? It's realistic. Yeah, it's more realistic than just three gallons per minute. Okay, this is wow. the rate at which gallons. Are, okay, let me ask you this. So, is the rate increasing or decreasing? Increasing. Is this? If I were to graph this, is the function increasing or decreasing? Increasing. How can you tell just by looking at it? Because if there's a plus sign. Yes. Okay, that's actually correct. <laughs> okay, so uh, how much water flowed out of this pipe? I'm not going to write all the words. From t equals 0 to t equals 2. So for the first two minutes, exactly how much water came out of this pipe? How do you do it? Well, here's the rate. This is the rate. You multiply it by an infinitesimal amount of time, which is dt, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, so what does that give you? This is gallons per minute. This is minutes. What is gallons per minute times minutes? Gallons. Gallons. So if you multiply these two, it gives you gallons, which is what you want. And then you add up all of these from zero, 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 zero to two. two. So this integral will tell you how much water flowed out of the pipe in the first two minutes. And you can do this with any rate, because on the AP exam, they go, oh, they have People are entering the amusement park at this many people per hour. How many people entered the park in the first six hours? And so you do an integral from zero to six of whatever the rate is, dt. So you can do this with any rate. So anytime you're given a rate and you want to find out how much was done, you just do an integral. 
Okay, now it's up to you to do the integral That's now. That's a u substitution. Very good. This is a u substitution. No, it's not a u substitution because I have to put a square there. U substitution. Yeah. Now we can do u substitution. Okay, u substitution. U equals. Now, if you're lucky, you can just punch it in on your calculator. Stop that. Du equals 3t squared dt. So this integral becomes, what do I substitute for that? Radical u. What do I substitute for the d squared, t squared dt? Du over 3. You guys should be experts at this already. And what are my new limits of integration? Park. My new limits of integration. 1 and 9. Remember, when you make a u substitution, the limits change now. And don't go back to the old ones, because some of you are doing crazy things already. Yeah. So this is one third times, now this is like u to the half, so you make the power one bigger, put the reciprocal in the front, and go from one to nine, factor out the constant, which is two nines, and what do you get? Plug in the top number, nine to the three halves. 27. 27 minus one to the three halves, one. one. So your final answer will be 52 over nine gallons. How many is that? Uh, Almost Five Smile. and seven ninths gallons. Five point seven repeating gallons. Smile. <laughs> okay, so tonight's homework pretty easy, huh? No. There's not enough available. Yeah, but like I told you in this chapter, when we get to eight point three, then we're gonna do three dimensional things like. What would happen if you revolve some graph about the x-axis or the y-axis? You get this three-dimensional figure. What is the volume and surface area? Is that of the last thing we're learning? Yes. Well, no. We have to learn one more thing because this year they added something. Anyway, we did it before. See this thing? L'Hopital's rule? We used to learn it anyway because it was a weapon. Because we can use it. Because even though the, uh, the rest of the, the United States, they, they didn't learn it, we learned it and gave us an advantage. But now, we're not going to have that advantage because everybody's going to learn it. So now you guys got to rely more on your ganas. Do you have the ganas? See. We saw the movie! See. No, we watched it. Did we finish it? Yes, we saw it. Remember little the little guy little asked, little. do you have the ganas? That means the desire. It doesn't look like it. Okay, we're done. Okay, you know what? You guys don't want to have ganas. I don't have. I don't want ganas. What is ganas? Desire. Oh. <laughs> I just. <laughs> you guys look at the look at the desire. Look at the, it's not like you play games already. What kind of desire is this? Just keep playing games. That's okay. We got my rat on the on film. I'll send this to the administration. Oh, it's yeah. Wait, let's film this class. Oh, wait. wait, let's show everybody's face so we know who we're talking about. Ganas, baby. Ganas.